Hello, welcome to Valve channel. I'm Stephen. Here is a Valve body material release from a Valve manufacturer. It is a very sophisticated material release. It includes a lot of material, like a carbon steel, like a WCB, low temperature steel, LCB, low alloy steel. Actually, it's one kind of high temperature steel, include a WC6, WC9, C12A, that all work in high temperature environment. Today, let's talk about the big group of material, stainless steel. So people, when talking about stainless steel, always talk about the astenantic steel and the duplex steel. So what is astenantic steel? Why use this name to describe this kind of material and also include the duplex steel? We need to look at the standard first. So in stainless steel, commonly we have two standards. One is for the forging, A182. Another is for the casting, Aston A351. So to understand what is Aston, what is duplex, Let's look at the standard A351. This is a casting stainless steel standard Aston A351. When we look at the title about this standard, you can see the casting austenitic, austenitic ferritic duplex steel. So why this standard name doesn't show stainless steel, this word, in the title? And also, what is the relationship between austenitic steel, duplex steel, and stainless steel. If you're working in the flow control industry, you always heard people going to talk about this equipment, this valve, this pump, made by austenitic steel or duplex steel. So what is the real meaning for those words? That is the question we are talking about in this video. To answer that question, first we need to understand what is austenitic and forensic. That is uh, very important. So we need to talk about a little bit about physics. So in my core world, the most important thing to make a substance, which is atom. And also, when we're talking about steel, whatever what kind of alloy steel you are talking about, steel at least contained 16% ferron atom inside. So ferron atom is the majority atom inside the steel. So we need to understand how ferron atom combined with each other to make a structure. So commonly we have two kind of structure inside the steel. First called a body central qubit structure. From this picture, all those small dots are all represent an atom. So this one called a body central qubit structure. So that means this qubit body in the center, in the center, it contains one atom inside. So this kind of form, this kind of structure we call a body central qubit structure. And the scientific name is forensic. And also we use alpha to represent this kind of structure. And another kind of structure we call a face central qubit structure. So that means in this kind of qubit and also all those dots are represent the atom, a single atom. So face center that means this qubit in each side, each face are all contained one small atom, one small atom. So this kind of stru uh, structure we call a face central qubit structure. And the scientific name is astenitic. And also we call this kind of structure is gamma structure. So that is the basic information about uh, astenitic and the forensic. So next, uh, let's talk about the relationship between each other. The relationship between two kinds of atom structure, Asnita and Ferrita, we need to find the answer in the phase diagram. So in phase diagram, we will find the answer when one kind of material, like a carbon steel, WCB. WCB inside the atom structure, for example, is Ferrita. But when something change, the atom structure will going to change to Asnita. And also it can change back so how this happened inside one kind of material, and when it was going to happen, we can find the answer in phase diagram. So here is the carbon steel phase diagram. 
So understand this carbon steel phase diagram, we will understand the stainless steel phase diagram much easier. So let's look at this diagram. It looks a little bit complicated, but I will try to make it easier for you to understand. The vertical side is already divided to different temperature range. So that means when temperature change, the auton structure will going to change. For example, the material carbon steel, WCB. WCB in temperature 400, 600, lower than 727 Celsius degree temperature environment. The inside WCB auton structure is ferrite. But when the temperature change to 800, going higher to 800, some kind of ferrite auton structure will going to change to another kind of structure, which is austenite. So in this range, 800 range, the auton structure are combined with two kinds of structure, alpha and gamma. So two kinds of stru structure all exist in this temperature range of this material. And then we're going to change the material again, heat the material to 1000 or to 1200. The whole material will totally change from ferrite auton structure to austenite auton structure. So that is the basic relationship between auton structure and temperature. So that is the first thing we need to understand from this phase diagram. And then another thing is, not just the temperature can change the auton structure, another thing also can change the auton structure, which is other kind of chemical element. When we say other kind of chemical element, we're talking about, for example, the carbon steel. The main chemical element is ferrin. It contains more than 19% ferrin inside carbon steel. The other chemical element is carbon. So carbon chemical element can change ferrin chemical element auto structure. So that is a basic principle. For example, in 800 level, in 800 level, WCB contained 0.3 carbon inside. So in 800 level, WCB, the auton structure is combined with two kinds of auton structure. If we have another kind of carbon steel, it contained 0.76 carbon inside. So the auton structure for this kind of material in 800 level, it already totally changed to austenite. And also we have very high carbon contained material, high carbon steel, contained 2% carbon inside. So this kind of material in 800 temperature level, the auton structure is combined, combined with austenite and Fe3C. Fe3C is another kind of auton structure. We will not talk about that in this video. So other kind of chemical element also we are going to change the steel auton structure inside. So according to this phase diagram, we already understand two kinds of things will change the auton structure. One is temperature, another is other chemical element. So let's talk about the stainless steel because stainless steel contains a lot of other chemical element inside. Here is a stainless steel phase diagram. It is very important for us to understand what is austenite steel and what is duplex steel. The basic principle is the same with the carbon steel. The vertical side is already divided to different temperature. The horizontal side it already taught us what kind of chemical element inside this kind of material. This is a stainless steel, so it contains a lot of chromium and nickel inside. If we combine the quantity of the nickel and the chromium together, we can get a certain percent of the chemical element inside the stainless steel. So whatever which point you're going to choose, if you combine two kind of chemical element together, you always can get a certain percent of the chemical element inside the stainless steel. So for example, in this point, this kind of stainless steel contained 15% chromium and 15% nickel. So the auton structure inside this kind of stainless steel is austenite. And the interesting thing is, according to the diagram, whatever how the temperature is going to change, the austenite auton structure will permanently exist in this kind of
stimulus to, except you heat this kind of material to a liquid. So that is the reason why we call this kind of stew is a Snyder stew. And also we have another kind of stew called a duplex stew. Duplex means alpha with gamma, or Snyder with Friter. So for example, in this part, this kind of stemless stew contained almost 20% of the chromium inside, and also it contained more than 5% nickel inside. So whatever how you're going to change the temperature, it all get two kind of two kind of autumn structure inside. One is a uh, Snyder, another is Friter. So that is the reason why we call this kind of material is duplex stew. So that is a uh, very easy for us to understand. And also why it has a two sample material here, because this diagram I download from a thesis. This thesis are going to talk about the stainless steel heat treatment. We are not going to talk about that, but the description are very useful. The austenite volume fraction of steel A is around 25% at room temperature. So in room temperature, the material A will get 25% of austenite. And the steel B is get 55%. And the steel B always contained more austenite than steel A. Because steel A are more close to this part, steel B are more close to another. So that is the reason steel B in the room temperature it contained more austenite than steel A. So that is the basic information about what is austenite steel, what is duplex steel. So next, uh, let's look at uh, the stainless steel standard. Here is a material list from the manufacturer, and uh, now we already understand what is austenitic steel, and that includes uh, CF3, CF8, CF3M, CF8M, and also includes the same level of the forging part. And also we have the duplex. So let me give you two examples of the duplex steel. In standard casting standard A351, CD, 3M, N, and another is uh, A351, CD, 4M, CU. So let's look at the standard here. Here is standard Aston A351 for the Astonantic and the duplex steel. Now we already understand what is Astonantic and the duplex steel. So let's see the chemical requirement table. In this table, you can see two kinds of duplex steel list in this table. One is CD4MCU, another is CD3MWCUN. So this kind of duplex steel most of the time contained much more chromium compared with other kind of uh, stainless steel. So commonly, Duplex stew are performed better than the austenitic stew, and also it is more expensive than the austenitic stew. So that is for today. I hope you like it. See you next video. Bye bye.